Things must have been very exciting at the turn of the 20th century. The end of an industrial revolution saw the birth of this little thing we call the automobile. No one really knew what the car could become. This was an age of design and innovation, developing a template so durable it would remain with the car for the rest of the millennium. Back then there was a duel, the electric car versus the petrol. But which car do you think ended up winning? So why all of a sudden do we once again believe that the electric car is the future? Because if anything, it's long gone history. Electric cars have always faced one pivotal problem, the batteries. Every car you see here is endlessly more usable and practical than any electric car on the market simply because they can go further. So if the electric car is to win this round, if they really are the car of the future, well, we've got an awful lot of catching up to do. And what better way to start than with this, the Nissan Leaf. It's the newest, most sophisticated all-electric car on the market. And apart from looking a bit like an entranced Smurf, it does present a very strong case for the electric car. The mere concept of having an electric drivetrain with a single gear ratio and a single moving part means that it is incredibly smooth. There's not a single noise coming through the cabin. Of course, you do have to consider the persona of the driver. This is not a performance car. Mind you, torque and performance are readily available thanks to the electric engine. The rolling resistant tyres don't make it too good around the twisty stuff. But if all you want to do is set off from the lights, get to work, go home, I can't think of anything that could do that quite so comfortably and smoothly. It's a difficult car to place into a category. The steering is far too leisurely and the car too heavy for it to be a city car. But can you really own an electric car in suburbia? This Nissan Leaf here is of course a press car and I've had to promise not to drive it more than 150 kilometers to make sure that I don't get stuck. So in a world that thrives on the simplicity and the convenience of the petrol powered car, how on earth does the heavily thwarting battery stand a chance? Maybe though, just maybe, when looking at everything the wrong way around. This is a television remote control. One of the many TV remotes tragically left in car parks every day. And it, like most household appliances, runs on battery power. There they are, we've got two AAA batteries plugged into the back. Now, if your TV remote runs out of power, you're not stuck on the same channel for six hours watching it recharge. You simply flick off the back, remove the old worn out batteries, like so, and replace them with these, the excellent MyDrive branded AAA battery. Plug them in, just like that, and your TV remote is once again fully functional and ready to go. Being able to change the batteries completely negates the problems that come with recharging them. So imagine then what it would be like if we could scale this concept to the electric car. If we could indeed change the batteries of our electric car, every issue that arises from recharging them would be made completely redundant. And that would be good. There's a rather bold movement coming out of Palo Alto in California. There, a company called Better Place is deploying a networked infrastructure that could finally make the electric car make a lot more sense. Electric cars today are locked. They are bound, restricted to travel within a strict radius defined by their own range. What you're looking at here is a battery switch station. And if all goes to plan, Better Place will be deploying thousands of these throughout the world. A setup like this would unlock the electric car. Your car's range would be exponentially extended, leaving it as capable and as usable as any car on the road today. It's a beautifully simple idea, but really does have the ability to trigger an electric car revolution. A concept that's left this fake family captivated with excitement. The 
the good news is, this isn't some wistful foreign concept. Better Place has picked Australia as a prime market to roll out their electric car infrastructure. Ben Keneally, their head of marketing and strategy, was there to answer a few questions. Now, the bravest thing in my eyes is not the initiative to roll out with electric car infrastructure, but instead is the decision to focus purely on the electric car. How confident are you, and indeed how can you be sure that the electric car is the car of the future, compared to, say, the hydrogen fuel cells? But the simple answer to that is you look around the world, everywhere, every other piece of equipment that we have, we use electric motors in. They're already the standard way of getting power into a machine. We've used petrol up till now because we could afford to be so wasteful with the inter internal combustion engine that we traded off the convenience of carting an enormous amount of energy around in a fuel tank for the, for the, the wastefulness of internal combustion engines. In every other piece of equipment, we use an electric motor because it's a far more efficient device. Electric motors are everywhere in the world. So it means that the car is the last thing to change. I haven't seen hydrogen fuel cells taken up in any other piece of equipment. They have a fundamental challenge in their fundamental efficiency. So why hasn't the electric motor worked in the past then for the car? Look, there have been, there've been two real reasons. The first one was battery technology. It's only in the last few years that the lithium-ion battery has become uh, robust enough and reliable enough that we could use it in automotive applications. And the second reason has been, historically, the availability of electricity. If you go back to 1890, 1900, there were actually more electric cars on the road than there were petrol. But the petrol infrastructure grew out effectively. The electricity grid actually lagged the development of the, of the, petrol, the petrol sector. Now, the electricity grid's everywhere, and so we've got the opportunity to use that electricity. The problems of electric cars now, they can be produced, and they're fantastic cars to drive. The challenges are outside the car. The challenges that revolve around the infrastructure, about them being convenient enough, and also about them being affordable enough. Because what the electric car does is it takes all that petrol that you'll use over the life of a car and turns it into a battery. And it's like buying all your petrol up front. Now that's an expensive way to buy a car. What we do is turn that around for people and remove their obligation to buy the battery, remove their obligation to bear the risk around the battery, and give them access to the infrastructure that they will need so it becomes convenient and affordable. In a nutshell, we replace the petrol station and the petrol for your electric car. We provide all of that for you. We make it easy and simple to adopt an electric car. When you buy a mobile phone, you don't buy a network. You rent one, you buy a plan. Better Place is offering the mobile plan for the car. They provide the battery, an electricity allowance, and access to a vast range of charging points and swap stations around the world. So, I'm now on my way up a big, twisty mountain, because at the top is a place that should provide us all with a good sense of perspective on things. Welcome everybody to a top secret corner of the Dandenong mountain ranges. A place so secretive that it quite literally has a fence. We could quite easily show a graph or draw a big picture, but this is a place that will help tie everything together in a slightly more breathtaking way. So this is a disused hang gliding launch ramp, which of course is completely irrelevant. But what's worth noting is that this is one of the only places in Victoria where hundreds of metres in the sky you get a clear, unobstructed view of the city of Melbourne and all of the suburbs that surround it. This is also a wonderfully important image in the story of the electric car because by sheer coincidence from up here the distance to the edge of the horizon is exactly half the range of the Nissan Leaf. 
So if you drive an electric car like the Leaf, what we've got here is an inimitable snapshot of all of the roads that you'd ever be able to reach. Now, for some people, this slice of the world may be enough, but for others, and indeed for most, this is likely to feel very binding and very restrictive. Because of course, if you took so much as a step beyond that horizon, you wouldn't be able to drive back. But consider it this way. Within this single expansive view, there are 204 petrol stations. If you had so much as one battery charging point or one battery swap station, then the range of your electric car could be as much as doubled. A hundred years ago, the only reason the petrol car beat the electric car is because the petrol infrastructure outgrew the electric infrastructure. But today, we live in an electronic world, a sort of digital society, and cars like the Leaf make a damn good amount of sense. They just, they just need the infrastructure to catch up to them. But what we have in companies like Better Place is a culmination of some of the best technologies and some of the best minds in the electric car world. But here, today, it is very early days. But give it five years, and I reckon the electric car is going to make a lot more sense.